Well, hello, this is uh, John Perham. Um, this is uh, the problem we didn't get round to solving in uh, the Math 2019 tutorial yesterday, problem 88b. So uh, here's how you solve it here. So um, we're going to try and solve this differential equation here, uh, inhomogeneous uh, differential equation. Um, so uh, let's get started. And there are about nine steps in the solution. So let's start at step one. So we want to uh, get this differential equation uh, in as a mathematical object. So we move this inhomogeneous term across and we take the second derivative of the unknown function y of x, subtract four times the first derivative and add five times the function itself and subtract off the inhomogeneous term. Now, um, <clears throat> because this inhomogeneous term isn't one of the simple forms like a polynomial or a exponential or a trigonometric function, then um, we're going to have to use the method of variation of parameters. So um, the first thing we have to do is to find the solutions of the homogeneous equation, that is the equation uh, where the right hand, where this inhomogeneous function is absent. So this is not there. So let's come down and do that. So we try to find a solution of the form a constant times an exponential function of some parameter lambda times the variable. So we put that into the homogeneous part of the differential equation. And we find that the result is, which must be zero. So the result is the constant a uh, times e to the lambda x times this quadratic polynomial in lambda. Well, a can't be zero because uh, we wouldn't have a solution. Uh, e to the lambda x is never zero. So we conclude that this polynomial here must be zero. So uh, we know how to solve quadratic equations. So we solve that and we can see there are two roots, both of them complex, two complex conjugates. Uh, so that means that the real solutions of the differential equations are uh, multiples of exponential of an exponential function uh, times the trigonometric functions cos x and sin x. So we'll calculate those. And then the complementary function is a, a linear combination of those which we can establish using that, where a and b little a and little b are constants we have to find. So let's now set about trying to find a particular integral. Well, the method of variation of parameters takes the two solutions of the homogeneous equation and multiplies them by two unknown functions, capital A of x and capital B of x. Uh, so the, the particular integral has this form. So we want to now put this into the, uh, where we have to find the functions ax and bx. Uh, we choose them in such a way um, that our task is as simple as possible. So let's calculate the first derivative of the particular integral. So we differentiate it with respect to x. And there we have it here. And you see it's already quite complicated. And one obvious uh, uh, thing to require is that the terms involving the derivatives a of x or a prime and b prime uh, should be zero. So let's extract that um, using this. So we take the coefficient of a prime in this equation and multiply it by a prime and so on. And that has to be zero. So that's our first equation. It's a linear equation connecting the two derivatives or the derivatives of the two functions a of x and b of x. And now we have to subtract that off our uh, derivative because that's the, and we get this simple expression here, which involves only the functions a of x and b of x. Okay. Now, um, we calculate the second derivative. So we differentiate that, um, the first derivative with respect to x, and we get b 
this expression here. <coughs> so now we're going to, having calculated the derivatives of our particular integral, we're now going to put those into the differential equation. So, um, so we put those in, uh, we take the sec second derivative, subtract off four times the first derivative of the particular integral, add five times the particular integral, and subtract off the inhomogeneous term to get a second equation, which we can see involves the derivatives a prime of x and b prime of x of the unknown function. So what we've got now is two linear equations this one and the first one, which was here, uh, for the um, derivatives of the two unknown functions. So we know how to solve those. Um, so what the easiest thing to do is to set the first equation equal to zero and solve it for b prime using that. So that tells me that uh, b prime of x is cot x minus cot x times a prime of x. And then we use that to eliminate b prime from the second equation. So we take the second equation, replace b prime by this solution here, and uh, simplify. And you can see now we've got a very simple linear equation for a prime of x, namely uh, this, and we can set that equal to zero and solve it using this. And that's particularly simple. And then we can put that solution for a prime into our solution for b prime and find that that's what b prime is. So we found those and now we need to find a and b which we can do by integration. So let's do that. So we take our uh, a prime function and we integrate it using this and we just get minus x. And then we do the same with our b prime and we get this. Um, now, strictly speaking, this should be the absolute value of this. Uh, but uh, if, if we're dealing with real functions, because if sine x is negative, then the logarithm of a negative number uh, is a complex number. Anyway, we uh, don't worry about that for the time being. So we now put those into our expression for the complementary function, sorry, the particular integral to get that. And as I said, um, we should put a absolute value sign here. So now we have to, all that remains to do is to add this particular integral to the complementary function, which we do here, and that's the solution of the problem.